This episode of The Curly Critics is brought to you by our brand new merch store, found at tpublic.com, Curly Critics Pod. Link is in the description. From WBNE. Hi, I'm Carrie. And I'm Jade. And we're The Curly Critics. And today we're talking about Prisoner of Azkaban, the movie. So, the yep, the third one. That's the one. I paused because I didn't know when I was going to say movie. <laughs> it's fine. So, this is our sixth installment in the Harry Potter series. Oh my gosh. We're making some I, progress. Things are I should actually, make a theme song. Things are starting to get good now. Let's make a Harry Potter theme song. I need to write that down. <laughs> What are your general thoughts? Okay, listen. I have 99 thoughts. All of them are that Oliver Wood isn't in this movie. Every single one of them. I could go on and on and on about that. He's not in the movie? No! You watched it last night! We both watched it yesterday! <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, mean, I was paying attention, but I didn't notice that. Like, not in even like a background scene is what I no. mean. No! Right? I wasn't, trying, I was, wasn't like opening my eyes, like, where's Oliver? Right. That's why I, I was, was <laughs> looking for him, like, even in the choir, the classes, like, everywhere. And he just. The choir. <sighs> I just. Listen, there's a lot that happened, but if Quidditch is such an important thing in this whole series, you wouldn't think them winning the Quidditch Cup would be important enough to put into the movie? It's not important to the overarching story. But it's it's important to me. I'm sorry, do you want to write J.K. Rowling a letter? Um, yeah. Or Alfonso, what's his face? We're gonna fight. You know what? We're gonna box just like the rest of the fandom. Okay. You have to get in line though. <laughs> I needed that director to shoot the scene where Oliver was trying to drown himself. Okay? I was waiting for that line. <laughs> like... And it just. Ugh! I'm so disappointed. I'm so disappointed. Okay? Like, you don't even know. There was one Quidditch scene, and it was for, like, two seconds. I did warn you about that. (laughs) I'm so mad. Like, did they even try? Okay. I just... See, (sighs) my thoughts are on a completely different spectrum. My thoughts on this movie was that it was a near-perfect booked movie adaptation. Don't even... Oh, we're gonna fight this episode. We're gonna box. <laughs> Holy is, crap. You don't even want to talk to me right now. To the viewers, listeners, this is my favorite Harry Potter movie. I've watched it so many times before this. So I was watching it again, and I really think it's really, really good. It is definitely the best Harry Potter movie from like other people that I've talked to, not just my own opinion. But I think it's the best book to movie adaptation out of all of them. Uh, okay. And it, like, um, it's, like, the first two were, like, word-for-word book to movie adaptations. Okay. But this one was, like, it got the main plot, but then added its own, like, fun lines in it. Like, this movie is the most memed book movie out of all of them. Right. It's just so iconic. And so it has its own, like, spin on it and, like, fun. And I, like, played with the characters in a fun way that I was like, yeah, I like these characters this way. Like, this movie actually made me like Alan Rickman's Snape. And so it's like, I like the way that they portrayed everybody and did everything. And it, like... It's just because they put him in a dress. You know that. You're right. 
but they like got all the important parts that I wanted to see and I never it never felt slow that's fair it I don't know I could argue that it felt slow in a couple places um I didn't like the book to movie adaptation oh no I this is gonna suck you guys <laughs> get ready for this roller coaster so I don't know this entire movie I was watching it going oh yeah this scene is word for word and then it'd be like there was a fast forward button being hit and you skipped like two chapters and then you kind of did that word for word and then it skipped again so it's like you're kind of just leapfrogging all across I I don't know I just think there were some things that they left out or things that they put too much emphasis on that they shouldn't have. Like what? The other thing... Oh, like what did they put too much emphasis yeah. on? I don't know. I don't have a good example now. Are you just... It's unfortunate. Are you just, is this whole based on the fact that there was only one footage game? No, it's not just based on that. It's based off of the whole freaking movie. Like, oh, we're going to fight. Okay, so how many times am I going to say that? You guys need to count. This is a drinking game now. Yeah, also, <laughs> a drinking game is watching this movie and saying, drinking every time Lupin says, eat, it'll make you feel better. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he says it at least three or four times. Don't get alcohol poisoning, my friends. <laughs> so... <laughs> I love saying drinking game if you like this, but I don't drink. <laughs> yeah, that's what's so ironic. It's so funny, you guys. We're hilarious. So, uh, I just, I had an example and it just left my mind. Sorry. <laughs> like, oh, so they went to the shack two times instead of once in the book. Like, in the book... He travels through to Hogsmeade twice instead of just the one time. Yeah. Do you remember that? So I feel like that was all kind of missing. The fact that Hermione and Ron couldn't go into the bar. I was like, well, that's not okay. I don't. Yeah. I think like the Hogsmeade thing is just like a time thing. Yeah. Like we can do what he did in two and one. The bar thing is like, why change it? But yeah, maybe just so viewers are like, oh, there are kids in a bar. Uh. That's why I said it was a near perfect adaptation because they also got rid of one of Rod's best lines. Yeah, I, I don't know. I thought one was probably my favorite book to movie. I feel like it was the closest in my opinion. I just, I just. I don't think a good book to movie adaptation is how well can you copy the book to a movie form. I think it's how well can you keep the essence of the book in a movie format. Right. So I think this I... one was really close. And like the first one I thought was so slow because it just copied the book. It's almost three hours long. Like it's just very long and like draining. Well, like this yeah. one is like these are the important parts of the book. Here's the themes and the vibes we want to give you, and we gave them to you. And so, like, the way that Alan Rickman, Alan Rickman David Thewlis, and Gary Oldman, like, play Snape, Sirius, and Remus, and, like, their relationship and the way that they're, like, vibing with each other. I keep saying vibing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the way that they, like, play the parts together, and you can, like, tell that there's, like, a childhood rivalry there. And just the way, like, like this was the first movie that the child actors started to actually be actors. Yeah. And so, like, the way that they're all playing, in a way, that you could see the way that Hermione and Ron fight with each other, and the way that how, like, knowing who Sirius is, like, affects Harry so much. Yeah. And all of those, like, important, like, relational themes, I thought were played out really well on the screen, and, like, some of the lines were different and some things were cut out, but the important stuff was there. Yeah, I didn't get so much of the relational themes. 
in the movie, I don't think. The only time I really got that was when Harry was crying. That's the only time I really felt that emotional connection to everything and was like, oh, this is a big deal. The rest of the time I was kind of like, why does this matter? I don't understand. Yeah. The other thing I was going to bring up was like, um, shoot, I keep losing it. It's <laughs> coming back to me. It's fine. Um, I think if you don't read the book... A lot of this stuff doesn't make sense. Like, there's so many quick little facts that you need to know. And if you don't, it's not going to make sense at the end of the movie. Like, the whole Godfather thing. Or, I don't know, there's just so many little tidbits that's like, oh, this is going to be really important later. And if you didn't catch that, the end reveal thing is going to be like, who are they, these people? What's the point of this? They mention in the bar that he's... Harry's godfather. And then he, like, right. brings, and then Sirius explains it later. He's like, I yeah. don't remember, but I'm your godfather. So it's, like, mentioned at least twice. But I yeah. I understand what you're saying, and I can't prove you wrong or right, because I've only ever watched it having read the book. Yeah. And that's what we did this time. Yeah. I just felt like if I hadn't have just read the book, I wouldn't get it. I'd be like, what it, what is this movie doing? What's happening right now? I don't know. I'm also like watching this movie. I don't know why I'm doing this, but watching it as if I were watching it with my parents who haven't read the books at all. Uh -huh. And I would want to know like, oh, would they be interested in this movie? And I just don't think they'd be able to follow it. <laughs> That's fair. Like, I don't know how people are so obsessed with just the movies. Because there's so many people I know who just watch the movies. And I'm like, how does it even make sense? How did you even get through the first one? Yeah, it would be interesting to ask people who have, like, only watched all of the movies what their favorite movie is. Yeah. As opposed to pe all people who read the books and watched all the movies what their favorite movie is. Yeah. Like, my roommate's boyfriend says that the third movie's the best. And I say the third movie's the best. My cousin yesterday told me that she thinks the third one's the best. But, like, I know that all those people have read the books. Yeah. And so is it, like, we're just projecting the way that the book has been portrayed on the movie screen and the way that we, like, relate to the book through the movie, if that makes sense. Yeah. I also just liked the way... That they're like playing with comedy in this mm -hmm. movie. Like the first scene in the Dursleys. Oh I texted gosh. you about it yesterday briefly. But the music that's playing in the background, the chaotic <sighs> energy, and just the like it's just the pure chaos that happens. It was like funny. And I was like, oh, this is yeah. music. And then at the end in the shrieking shack, the way how fast they're all playing off of each other. And the blocking that they're doing, the way that everybody's moving around each other, really reminded me of, like, Noises Off or, like, A Play yeah. That Goes Wrong type of thing. Where they're, like, we're explaining the situation to you as fast as possible in a way that you can understand, but we're also doing it in a kind of, like, funny, comedic way. Like, and then, yeah. like, the way that, like, Scabbers ran off and, like, they, he, like, turned into a human in the wall. Was, yeah. Like, very amusing. And I appreciate mm -hmm. that. <laughs> Yeah, because it was re a really dark scene when you're reading it, but then when you're watching it, it's like, oh, this is actually entertaining to watch. It's not yeah. just like, oh, darkness. Right. I also, the one change that I don't, I didn't know how to feel about it. I wasn't like mad about it, but the one change that I thought was interesting was the fact that Harry saw Peter Pettigrew on the map. He was like, wait a minute, what's this? Yeah. Again. Instead of the other way that, the had, that they had found it before, because, the like, Harry had just been wandering around. Yeah, I don't... How did they find it before? It was like they were leaving and they saw him on the map? Yeah, I don't... I, I can't remember. 
Alright, let me get my book. <laughs> yeah. I think in the book it was a lot of, like, Lupin figured it out. Yeah. And he's like, oh, the map must be broken. I was disappointed in this movie. The line in the book where Snape says from the manufacturers, I was convinced was in this movie. Because the way I read it was in Alan Rickman's voice, and so I was convinced that I've heard it before. But it wasn't. Yeah. And I still, like, no. I replayed that scene because I was like, did I miss it? But I didn't. And that's one of the things that was like I was sad was missing from the movie was the whole like by the way I'm Hatfoot Frogs and like we're them. We wrote this book this map. Just like the scene of the book that I just flipped to was like they like in the shrieking shop and then Lupin was like, Yeah, I was looking at the map and Harry's like, What? You know how it works? And Lupin was like, Yeah, I wrote it and then he just like keeps talking and Harry's like, You you what? Yeah. I feel like that wasn't explained very well either. Like, how do people who watch the movies know about the Marauders? Right. Okay, basically, in the book, Lupin figured it out. They, like, didn't know about Peter Pettigrew until the Shrieking Shack in the book. Right. And that's where I'm like, wait, what is happening? <laughs> So you have to, like, build up some cinematic suspense, I guess. And be like, yeah. wait a minute, who's that? Because, like, they've talked about, in the book, they've talked about Pettigrew a lot. Yeah. And so you're like, oh, I know what happened there. But in the movie, it was, like, a brief, like, series killed him. Yeah. It would have been really funny if they had done the movie where, like, Scabbers was sleeping in Ron's bed. Oh my gosh. And Ron, or, and Harry would just be like, why are there two names in Ron's bed? That's so weird. Oh my gosh. Like, the fact that the Weasley twins <laughs> had the map for years. For uh... <laughs> five years at this point. And, like, Ron has so been there bad. for three, and they never said anything. Uh, I feel like the Marauders map is just gonna be like the mystery mouse Couture later on, just like the invisibility cloak has been for every book. They're like, "OMG, we can be invisible!" Uh. <laughs> I did think it was funny that, like, when Harry does go to the Shrieking Shack and they do all the Malfoy stuff. I did think that was done well where they didn't see that it was Harry and there wasn't all that drama and stuff. What are you talking about? Where? At the Shrieking Shack when they're outside of it in the snow and Harry is bullying the oh, oh, oh. Yeah, bullies. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and Hermione finds out and Ron's like, oh, you scared the crap out of me. Like, that was so funny to me. I was like, that was good. I needed that. Yeah, I like that scene a lot. And you didn't need the extra drama of Draco finding out, because it's like, he's gonna get in trouble later anyways. In this one, okay, I didn't see Draco as much of a, like, like a menace? He was more just like a Annoying. cowering baby. Yeah. We talked about this briefly over text about we talked we texted each other for a long time yesterday about the harry potter guys like growing up and like being attractive yeah and like that kind of thing and i told her that draco is so popular as a character because of tom felton and yeah. she was like he's not that attractive but also just the way tom felton plays draco in the movies is very kind of like stuck to his own circumstances, especially later on, like, a slave to his situation. Mm -hmm. And, like, so he's, like, a lot more of a, like, redeemable character. And then in this book, it was a lot more of just, like, ha-ha, I'm making fun of you, but not, like, I'm the reason for all this suffering. <laughs> yeah, and then every time someone even, like, barely threatened him, he'd start crying. <laughs> Like, when the when Hermione had the wand up to him, I was like, you're such a baby. What's she well, gonna do? As soon as she, like, 
let go of it, he stopped because he was like faking it. Yeah. He was, like milking it because he like stopped and then she turns around and punches him. That scene has so much power. Yeah. That was good. I, and then I, watching it again, I, I was like. This is like Back to the Future 2 when he's watching himself play Johnny B. Good. I'm like, yes. Yes. I you haven't seen that, but. Daniel it's Radcliffe's. Fun. I've seen the first one. Not the second one, though. Oh, no. <laughs> he literally goes back and watches himself play Johnny B. Good. It's oh. hilarious. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I love the way that Daniel Radcliffe, the whole scene where they're like, go back in time and they're like watching themselves. Daniel Radcliffe is just so good in there. He's like, oh my god, like, this is not normal. And Hermione's like, fine, I'll explain it to you. <laughs> Can you relax? <laughs> and when he comes back, and Ron's like, how did you do it? And he's like, you can't be in two places at once, Ron. I'm like, yeah, that's so good. That's so good. This, the writing for this movie, or just all of the movies we've seen so far, is a little bit confusing to me. Because they do a lot to, like, down credit or discredit Ron's importance and, like, hype up her writing's importance. But then also, like, the writing is very slanted towards, like, Ron her writing relationship. Yeah. While also Which being I slanted, don't get. While also being slanted to a Harry her writing relationship at the same time. Yeah, they were literally, like... Hermione was crying on Ron's shoulder one minute, yeah. and five minutes later, Harry and Hermione were holding hands. I was like... So I'm like, are they just trying to play it neutral so we like, can't figure it out? But also, pick one. Or don't do either. Yeah. It's Why does... Or, it's like they don't know how to write a female relationship that's not romantic. Yeah. Just let I don't know. Hermione be a gr- best girlfriend. I like the idea of like, oh, they've gone through a traumatic experience. One of them's gonna be a couple. I get it. Like, I like that. I liked that with Percy and Annabeth. Like, I loved that arc. And they have similar chemistry. It just... I don't know. The way they're doing it in the movies versus the books is tragic because they're really just friends in the books and in the movies they're trying to all of them. Does Literally just all of Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense and I'm like why? <laughs> yeah. It's just like weird to watch, especially like knowing everything to like watch that again and be like what are you trying to do? There's yeah. a scene later on in the Deathly Hollows Part 1, I think, that's incredibly confusing on this situation. But I'm like, it doesn't stop here. It just keeps going Great. for the next six movies. Five movies. I could do math. <laughs> and so I just, like, don't know what to think. Like, I don't know what to try to do. Yeah. I think that's probably gonna be like my biggest complaint besides the oliver wood thing for all the movies is like why does there need to be an unnecessary romance if it's not even written in the book you're just making context out of nothing yeah i will say that they have some context because they have more books than you've read the people creating the movies oh okay at this point when does this book movie came out? Good question. At this point, they had up to book five for this movie. Okay. So, they have more context, but a lot of the stuff, romantic stuff, like the romantic aspect of this series really begins in book six, which they didn't have yet. Oh my so, gosh. I don't We can move on and get back to that when we get to that point of the series. Goodness. I did like how the um how the going back in time scenes were done. I thought that was really well done. I do still think, even if you're just watching the movies, though, it's a weird plot point. It's a weird thing to do. It's like, oh, 
You're just going to fix everything by going back in time. Stellar. But I also think it's kind of creative, a creative way to fix it. Because it's, it adds some suspense to it that's not just, oh, and everything miraculously worked out in the end. Like, it creates, right. it sets it up in a way that it's probable for two 13-year-old kids to save both an animal and an escaped convict. Yes. As opposed to, we just conveniently got him out of prison at the right time, or like, Dumbledore just happened to say the right thing. Right. I mean, he did. But like, to like, people who matter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he also did. When he... When he was, like, milking all the pointing out stuff oh, yeah, to yeah, Fudge yeah. and all that, I was like, oh, that's funny. It wasn't I Fudge. Th- it was someone else. But that was hilarious. I'm not Dumbledore's biggest fan. Actually, it's so interesting reading these books again, especially from this point onward, because I have not, I don't think I've read book four since I, like, read it the first time, and I don't think I've watched book four since I've, like, read it the first time which is in middle school so it's gonna be very interesting to see how this goes because almost all of my information now is based off of like fan theories and fan fiction yeah and so like it's already redeeming my liking of ron because fan fiction has been very mean to ron oh i love so, like, ron oh my god like, reading the books again has already been like all right like ron's great so it's interesting to see how I'm going to feel about Dumbledore when I finish all of this, and also how I'm going to yeah. feel about Snape when I'm done with all of this. Yeah. But I loved Dumbledore in this movie. Yeah, he dude, was, he was killing it. He's like just mysterious and aloof enough, but in a comedic way. Yes. I loved the way this movie played with comedy. It was so good when they're in Hagrid's hut. <laughs> He's like... I just need your name. And Dumbledore's like, well, it's a very long name. <laughs> that was so funny. It's a long name. Did he say it in the movie? No. It has, I just knew like, he was going to go on and on and on. He has like seven names. Like Dude, Albert, that's Albus, Byron, Wolfric, Percival, Dumbledore. And maybe not in that order and maybe not with all of those names. But <laughs> it's like, it's a long name. Yeah. But yeah, that, and then when they go outside and he's like, oh, this is my favorite spot for this and this and this, and if you look over this way, and Hermione's just like, Ugh. Yeah, I just love, like, this Dumbledore being, like, a he was much more true to the early book Dumbledore, which was very, like, and now some words before the feast, and then he just, like, says random words kind of vibe. Yeah. He's very like, haha, I'm funny. I'm the old wizarding guy. Yeah. Or like Disney Merlin. Yeah. Those kind of attributes. And I liked that. I like Dumbledore like that. Yeah. I hope he stays like that. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to get to a point where and this is this is one of my favorite things about watching movies. I can't wait to get to the point where I can go on cable and Harry Potter is always playing on some channel and just whichever one is on, it's on the, it's in the middle of the movie. There's commercials every five minutes. I can't wait to just turn it on and go, ah, yes, I know exactly what's happening right now. (laughs) This is so nice because right now it kind of feels like I'm doing this for homework and I kind of am like, this is kind of like a job in a sense. So I can't wait to go back and just watch it just because. Yeah. That's like a thing about, I think for Harry Potter, for me, but for a lot of people, it's one, the story is good, but I love the world that she created. Right. And the characters that she's made. And just, like, this place that, like, the fandom exists. And for so many people, this is, like, their happy place. Yeah. And, like, a, like, I could go back to this and it feels comfortable to me and it feels normal. And just, like, the way that, like, everybody has an opinion on it in some way. And it's, like, part of the culture. Mm-hmm. My friend the other day was talking about how she 
every Christmas break, she tells herself she's going to watch the Marvel movies because she feels like she's missing out on the pop culture because she's never seen them all. But she never does. And so I was, like, telling her, like, which ones to watch and which ones to skip. Yeah. Which is, like, not related. We told her to pick a Avenger and just, like, watch all of their movies. And then if you, like, if you weren't overwhelmed by them, to just, like, go on to the next one. Yeah. So I feel like this is for you. I, like... You're trying to catch up at this point. Yeah. But then when you finish, you'll be able to, like, look back and be like, oh, yeah, I, like, enjoyed that, or I like this thing. And, like, being able to just, like, read fan fiction or, like, read fan theories and, like, understand what's happening and be like, ha <laughs> ha like, Yeah, I can't... I can't even look stuff up on Twitter or Pinterest. Like, I was looking up something completely unrelated. I was looking up Smosh pictures on Pinterest and got some Harry Potter spoilers. And I was like, what? I didn't... How did this happen? What is happening? Yeah, after we finished the recording, the book, the Prisoner of Azkaban book podcast episode, I just sent her a bunch of memes that I had been saving. Yes. For, like, when she, like, finished book three. And I was like, when this makes sense, I'll send you all of these memes. I was like, these are the kind of things that's, like... Like, you may not love the books, but the, like culture that it creates is great yeah the memes are great and being able to understand those finally <laughs> i also have a bunch of tiktok saved that i'm waiting until we finish the next book to send her. <laughs> oh my gosh it's just gonna keep going i found a marauder meme the other day that i really wanted to show you but it doesn't make sense until book six so <laughs> ah okay <laughs> so my two favorite lines from this movie are you're gonna suffer but you'll be happy about it. Just, and then the spiders, they want me to tap dance. Oh my gosh, that go back scene. to sleep, Ron. Oh my gosh! It's hilarious. Ah! Harry's just like awake, and like, Ron wakes up all startled. And then Harry's just like, go back to sleep, Ron. I'm like, I love this so much. He was like, just ask them to stop. And he's like, <laughs> okay, ask them to stop. And I was like, that is, like, that is friendship goals. I've had to do that before. Where I'm like, just tell them to do this. And they're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep like, talking people, man. Neither of those are like in the books. Yeah. And I was like, I love this. I love the one where Hermione's like, is that what my hair looks like from behind? <laughs> because I think about that constantly. I'm like, what does my hair look like from the back? I told Jade before we started this movie that this is the best that they've ever looked. I love Hermione. I like, they all are oh. like so cute, like 13, 14 years old. Like, they look great. Hermione's hair is the best that it'll ever be. Mm. They just go downhill from here, honestly. Daniel Radcliffe stops getting taller. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, this is a short baby. I just, this movie gives me happy feelings. I liked in this movie the way that Lupin just right off the bat was like, yeah, I knew your parents. <laughs> but I also don't like it, because I like in the book how he, like, doesn't say anything. He's, like, all mysterious, like, haha, I don't know anything about them. And then at the end, he's like, yeah, I just, I'm best friends with your parents. I wrote this map, like. Yeah. They turned into Animagus for me, like, we're on this high level of friendship, and Harry's like, I'm sorry, what? He just gets, like, shocked to death. Like, in the book, the Shrieking Sad scene is just, like, slapping Harry across the face for, like, four chapters. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Sirius Black's here to kill us. Oh, wait, he's not here to kill us. Oh, Lupin is Sirius's best friend. Oh, Lupin has been Dad's best friend. P Ron's rat is actually Peter Pettigrew? Like... Oh, Snape is here. Oh, shoot. I just knocked him out. <laughs> right. And I liked that aspect, but I also felt like it was good to see the Lupin-Harry relationship on the screen. And like a... Yeah. Like, yeah, I know your parents. These are things about them. Because it's like all Harry would want is for somebody to tell him what his parents were like. Yeah. I thought that was sweet. I was like, oh, this isn't in the book, but it's kind of nice. He's finally getting something, like, something to hold on to. 
Yeah. It's like when Hagrid gave Harry the picture book mm -hmm. in the first book. I don't know if that's in the movie or not. He does have a frame. I don't remember if he has the whole book or not. Yeah. I thought it was weird, too, when he was casting his Patronus, and he's like, the memory I thought of was them talking to me. Yeah. He's like, I don't even know if that's real. I was like, what does that even mean? <laughs> that's weird. It's nice, I guess. Yeah. They were really hyping up the, like, parrot theme in the movie. Yeah. Which was fine, but also, we don't ever really learn a lot about them in the movie. Yeah, that's kind of the thing. It's like, they make this huge emphasis on it, and it's like, well, if you would do that in a better way, maybe it would make more sense. Yeah. So, do you have any other thoughts? Um. What do you think this has on Rotten Tomatoes? Uh. The. Is this the audience one? Or the critics I, I one? I think we were doing the critics one. I mean, I can guess both. I don't. Guess both. That's. I don't remember what we did for the last movie. <laughs> I think we did both. Okay. Okay. I think the critics is a 83. Okay. And I think the audience is 89. Okay. The same, I think the audience is like 82 and the critics is like a 77. Fine. Oh gosh. <laughs> Just looked at it. The critic score is a 90%. And the audience score is an 86. I was closest to both. Yeah, I think. That's a lot higher for the critic score than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Like, I like this movie, but I didn't think it was critically acclaimed. I was going to compare them, but I don't want to look at the other scores because... I'll be like, I can't remember this number, and then I'll just remember it, and for the next one, I'll be like, I know the score because I remembered it from the last time. Yeah. That is kind of shocking, like a 90. Holy moly. <laughs> but also, the Descendants movies have a 90 on Rotten Tomatoes oh for the critic score, so take what you will with that. <laughs> but those movies do bop. I, I haven't seen them yet, so... Well, <laughs> I have Disney Plus. I need to watch them. Yes. What? Are the Harry Potters on Disney Plus? No, they're not what Disney the... movies. Oh, I didn't. Did I know that? I don't no, know. Sorry, no. They're a Warner Brothers movie. Oh. I don't know what Who I'm talking about. Warner Brothers at this point? Are they their own thing? I think they're still their own thing. Because the... I know it's on. ABC all the time. ABC yeah. Family, which is technically a Disney owned. Yeah. It's Warner Brothers are still Warner Brothers. Oh. According to Wikipedia. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what would you rank this movie? So, just movie, right? Yeah. What? We're only talking about the movie. <laughs> well, I know. I just, sometimes it's like, oh, book to movie. So, oh, I yeah, get confused. Yeah. Just the movie. The movie as a whole. Um, Out of ten. I'm trying to take everything into account here. And I'm dying. Okay. Um, <laughs> Hedwig, help me. <laughs> I have a stuffed owl. I'm not just talking to myself. It's fine. I'm telling the viewers. You know. <laughs> the listeners. I just... I did the get, same thing earlier. I took the viewers listeners really close together. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Um. I mean... I'll give it a seven... 
like I wanted to give it a six and a half, but I'm like, you know what? I want to give it like a 6.8, but that would just be horrendous, and I don't want to do that. 6.8. Oh, God. Eh, it's not that bad. It's too many decimals for me. I can't handle that. Do you want a 6.8 or a 7, Jave? I'm using Excel, so I'm not doing the math. <laughs> I just, like, I have strong feelings. There's only one Quidditch match. It's... Two hours and 20 minutes, and they didn't add the most important thing. It's not the most important thing to the plot. <laughs> Oliver, what is the most important thing to my plot? <laughs> We're gonna read the next book, and Jay's gonna be like, I give it zero stars because Oliver Wood's on it. <laughs> it's like those things that are Harry Potter movies ranked based on like this specific thing. But, like, the Harry Potter books ranked on the mentions of Oliver Wood. <laughs> <laughs> I just hit the mic. Don't worry about me. Okay, 6.8 or 7. I'll give it a 7 because it was funny. Okay? Okay. I'll give it... Because I feel like if you give me a 6... Or if I give it a 6.8, you'll just hit me right through the screen. I already put my score in there, so, like, I'm willing to put whatever you want in there. But, like, as a person, if I rank it less than seven, you'll just want to fight me. No, that's not true. That is true. I give it a nine. <laughs> yeah, I figured. Because it just makes me happy. And see, I'm going to be that way with so many other things. This just hasn't done it for me yet. I gave it a seven. I just... Yeah, I also have the advantage of knowing everything. Exactly, like, you know. like, everything is still so up in the air, and it's like, oh my gosh, what is the point of all of this? What is happening? Harry's just being dumb right now. Like, That's everyone's why, just being dumb. That's why your score's doubled. Because you... <sighs> you don't know everything, so you're not biased in your opinion. Yeah, I'm just trying to be understanding... You're you're the only objective one here. <laughs> I'm trying to be objective, subjective, opinionated, and also look at all that I know so far. That's and like try. Yeah, so that's sorry. why I like break every time you ask me. I'm like, does not compute. Arrow, just, error 404, help me. It's also just funny because you know what I'm going to ask every time. <laughs> every time and every time I'm like, oh, shoot, dude. I don't know. Shoot, dude. Shoot, dude. Okay, so the last thing is Goblet of Fire. What are you <sighs> guessing it's about? God. Help me. Um, <laughs> The only information I've given for you based on this is that the book is like this thick. And yeah, that dude. Quidditch is important to it. <laughs> Thank God. It's like a brick. I Oh, it's it's seven hundred pages. I could kill someone with that. I mean I could like I don't So you just want me to guess and be what do you stupid think Goblin and... Fire is about? We've been doing this for all the other ones, Jade. But last time I was so disappointed I thought we'd get to go to the prison. Do you want me to read the little synopsis? No. Would that make you feel better? No, because that's <laughs> cheating. Um. Well, I know what it. What? I was gonna say it's the most vague title, but that's not true. So keep going. <laughs> Is it? No. I mean, it's pretty vague as a title, but it's not the most vague. I mean, I know what a goblet is, and I know what fire is, <laughs> and um. I don't know. Just based off of that, I'm like, are they gonna drink something with fire in it? Is there a big goblet where there's like, it's like a big cauldron and someone's gonna try and make soup out of the kids? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel like, is that the best guess ever? Because I'm pretty sure. I mean, <laughs> it's not completely inaccurate. That's so unfortunate. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> You're like crying. <laughs> <laughs> and
and I'm doing the breaking no. <laughs> uh, I messed up my contacts. Oh, sorry. no. <laughs> I just think Goblet of Fire is such a weird title, knowing the whole plot of the book. Right. And I was thinking about it. Lord of the Phoenix is the most straightforward. I think... Or the Philosopher's Stone. That's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Half Blood Prince makes no sense compared to the plot of the movie in the book. So, I think that's your best guess. Is it? I mean, I could think of more, but I feel like of all of the Disney cartoons I've seen, that's happened at least once. I mean, you're right. I mean,. Can you think of anything else? <laughs> um. Well. I guess I don't want to ask any questions about it. Because I just want to read it. You Do I have to deal with the Dursleys again? I really don't want to. Not for very long. Ah. Uh... You always have to deal with the Dursleys. I Do I really? Oh my god! I never go away. Why? Because he lives Why? With me. Why? That's the million dollar question. Why? <laughs> why? I just. Why? Let me get my book. Hold on. <laughs> All I'm thinking is, why can't the Weasleys adopt him? She walked away for these two seconds, and I'm still talking, and it's really entertaining. Uh contact. I said a bunch of bad words while you were gone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, first chapter, not with the Dursleys. Wait, so they're trying to trick me. Oh my. Second chapter is with the Dursleys. Oh my, what is the point of them? Like, we get it. He's part of an abusive family, but I'm over it. I'm over it. I think they explain it at some point, but the explanation is not great. Oh my gosh. You're telling me I have to suffer through this, and they're just like, ah, whatever. Their importance in them gets smaller and smaller. <sighs> it's Because then the books get bigger. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, oh, the jerseys are in this... Like, the Dursleys each have, like, two chapters in every book. Oh my but gosh. it's two chapters compared to, like, 40 instead of two chapters compared to 20. <laughs> and then the first book was, like, six. God. Yeah. That was a tragedy. Why can't he just live with the Weasleys? I don't know. What's the point of that? Charlie's gone. So is Bill. Just replace them. Percy's and probably Percy about graduated. to leave. Yeah. What's the point? Oh my gosh, Percy and Oliver are in the same year. I love that for them. They share a dorm. Think about oh. that. Oh. Oh. Think about that Percy is and so... Oliver sharing a room together. Like, that is so much... Like... <sighs> I'm sure there are a lot of fan fictions about that. I Yeah, I saw a picture, a fan picture the other day about them, but I was like, I've never actually considered that. <laughs> There's just a lot of energy between the two of them. Like, angsty, but old energy. Like, they think they're better than everyone else, and they just have to be on top all the time. And so I feel like they're just always competing. They're like, oh, who's going to get out of bed first? Oh, who's going to make their bed first? Oh my gosh, who's going to go downstairs first? Well, I'm head boy. Well, I'm the captain of the Quidditch team. <laughs> but also, like, I don't think they have anything in common. <laughs> But can you just imagine? No, I just... can't imagine it. I just, I'm not saying, I'm saying it wouldn't look work out long term. Because Oliver only cares about Quidditch and Percy only cares about being the best. They would just try and out-compete each other. Constantly. Yeah, you're right. I'm just very fascinated by that now. I'm like, what are all the things they could compete at? Like, what if Oliver one day just leads the entire Gryffindor house back to their dorms and Percy's like, out of the way, I'm head boy, and they're already in 
And Oliver's like, ha ha ha, <laughs> sucker. I love the idea that Oliver and Percy are actual enemies. Like, they're each other's <laughs> Oh my gosh. Can I fix my contact? I don't know. I think it's time to wrap this up. So I can take my contacts out. I just... I love that idea. That makes me happy. I I should write a fan fiction. You know what? I should write a fan fiction about these two hetero boys. Men. Men boys. They wouldn't work out romantically, but they could definitely be nemesises. Nemesai? Nemesis. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we gave the movie a 7.67. Yeah. James predicting that Goblet of Fire is going to be about a cauldron of fire that somebody cooks children in. Probably. Or, or that, that they, somebody... like, drink fire. That'd be cool. Yeah. When they, like... And Percy Jackson, when they drink the ambrosia, and they're like, oh, it's like fire, but then it's not. Like that. But it's actually fire. But it's actually fire, yeah. And they're like, oh, man, that wasn't good. I shouldn't do that again. And then they put the goblet of fire down. (laughs) Or it's like some enchanted thing, and they're like, oh, it's the goblet of fire. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. I mean, that's not inaccurate at all. (laughs) I want someone to say that. I bet it's McGonagall. That'd be funny. (laughs) Oh, what a goblet of fire. (laughs) All right. We're losing our minds. Ha ha. Catch us for our next episode in our Harry Potter series, Goblet of Fire. The fourth one. Yeah, the book. Yes, the fourth book. The millionth episode. The seventh episode. (laughs) There's so many. (laughs) Ah. Every time we film these, because we're filming them ahead, in case you were listening to these, we filmed this long before. We filmed this one in November of 2020. Put in the year, because I don't know when we're going to release them. Yeah, and like, Like, we did the first one in like August or September. And so we're like, when we release these, that's like 14 at 15, because there's two seven movies, 15 episodes that are just going to be there that we're like, not know what to do with ourselves. Ah! So, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Curly Critics Pod. Email us your thoughts. Do you Tell us which Jade? movie is your favorite. And whether or not you've read the book, all the books, and watched all the movies. Yeah, we need to take a poll. No one does our polls on Twitter right now. Do them. (laughs) Maybe we'll have more followers when this is released. (laughs) Yeah, we need at least 10. (laughs) So sad. Like, honestly, we don't have 10, I don't think. I don't either. (laughs) But thanks for listening. Yeah, pineapples. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to check out this podcast from the WBNE Network. Dear listener, today's going to be a good day, and here's why. Because today we have found your new favorite podcast. Do you like all things musical theater? Or do you just like Hamilton? Then Sincerely Us is perfect for you. We take deep dives into modern musicals and teach you all that you need to know. From props and sets. To playwrights and composers. We will get you caught up on all things Broadway. We are Becca and Eenie, two best friends. Here to teach you all about the shows that we love. Sincerely Us, a podcast for the casual musical theater fan. Join us every Wednesday wherever you get your podcasts and on WBNE.org.